Welcome to Machine Shop Tech Talk, everyone. This episode's a little bit different. I'm on a mission to interview people under 25 that are in the trades, whether it's machining or welding or whatever that looks like, to really celebrate them because I love the career path. And my hopes is more young people see these conversations and they find out a little bit more about what's possible for themselves in a career in manufacturing. Today, I've got a tool ram. We met down at IMTS, actually. So without further ado, Atul Rem, thank you for being here, man. Thank you for having me, Arthur. So I know you sh you've shared with me before, but the people listening out there, they don't know. So how how did you find yourself? You're maybe say how old you are now and how like how long you've been in the trades. What kind of got you in? Yeah, basically. So I'm Atul Rem. I'm from Purdue University and I'm 21 years old. Uh, I've been in the trade for about two years now. Basically, what happened was one day uh, in December of 2021. Yes, I know the exact time frame. Hey, uh, that's I cool. Came, yeah, I came across this video from uh, a Titan from Titans of CNC. Um, it was his li a Titanium Lion video. Um, you know, I watched it. I was inspired by it. And, you know, I was like, hey, I have a machine shop on campus. Basically, it's available to every student across campus. And one day I just went in, tried one of his parts on his academy, and I just fell in love with the industry ever since. Oh, that's crazy. So you saw the the line, which I've, I've seen that line. I've been following Titan since like 2015, right? So I know the line you're talking about. Um, so did you draw the part yourself? Did you get the machine like the program already made or did you figure out cad cam and everything before you got on the machine so i knew a little bit of cad already uh I, at the time i was working with a uh, student uh, race car team um so oh. at purdue uh we have this program called sae a student uh kind of a race car program where we built a uh, electric uh formula style race car and from there, uh, I learned a little bit of machining with some of the manufacturing required for some of the car. And from there, uh, after that, I was introduced to the center. And uh, through that, I saw his video. I went into his academy, designed uh, the f my first part was actually the Titan 200M. I went straight for the five axis academy after watching that <laughs> video. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of how it went down. So you're like... I know a little bit of CAD CAM. I, I'm already on the race car team. I'm going to go full five axis for my first part. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How did it feel to get that first part done, to like do the model and the program and actually get it made? With it being my first part, I did a lot of things wrong, but it felt yeah. good to finish it and learn what I could have changed. And, you know, that that first part itself was a stepping stone in the right direction to you know, get me going, get me passionate and teach me a few things to then uh, improve upon that. But well, I like the mindset, man, because it, it didn't turn out perfect. There was opportunities to improve, but you just kind of kept moving away at it. So you started at Purdue. You did your first part as a five axis, which is wild to me. That's crazy. That's like jumping into the deep end and you're like, ah, I'll figure it out. So where did it go from there for you? Because, I mean, you said 2021 where 2020 it's been like three years what's that what's your where did you go from there yeah so basically i uh, started machining more parts at the center just like different things for the race car team and different things across the academy you know just taking a simpler step starting with maybe like the titan 1m things like that and then i got hired at the center basically i started oh. as a peer mentor um so i would help with other students as well um approving their cam making sure it was correct uh to run on the machines things like that from there i kept on growing made my way over to imts 2022 where i met titan and you know things have just been you know continuing onwards i got promoted last year as well at the center um so just individual stepping stones uh such as getting hired and you know just machining away more and more different things uh and different materials as well that's that's so cool man so you did it all you got hired on by Purdue so and you just got a promotion congratulations by the way thank you yeah so what's your role now you said you were mentoring and then you got a promotion do you still mentor the the new students or what does that look like 
So a lot of the mentoring at uh, my uh, center is done by our peer mentors. So with the promotion of supervisors I, uh, to supervisor, I now handle a lot more of the training uh, for the peer mentors, um, things okay. like machine maintenance as well and tool testing, um, along with uh, a lot of my colleagues uh, uh, and the other supervisors uh, at the center. Well, I uh, just wanted to mention that now I'm also working as an intern at Rivian Automotive uh, as a manufacturing engineering intern. Rivian, really? Yeah, it's really cool. And battery is, a, would say, a relatively new kind of concept for industrial manufacturing. Um, so a lot of companies are tr still trying to figure it out. Uh, companies like Tesla and Rivian leading the way uh, for that. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot more of actually the Rivians up here. I'm up in BC, right? And I've been seeing a lot more of them in the last couple of years. That's very cool. So your role now is you're interning. Do you have a specific department that you're working in? Or do you have like a plan or a path that you've worked out that you kind of want to travel? So basically right now, I'm working a little bit on the DFM side. So process development uh, and tooling development uh, for the... Um, Raven just recently announced the uh, R2 and R3 uh, vehicle platforms. So working on tooling development for uh, the battery production uh, production line. That's neat. So if you're talking tooling development, do you mean custom tools as well? Or are you testing a lot of tools to prove out? Or what is yeah. what is your day-to-day -day look like there? So a lot of it is going to be I'm designing custom tools. I'll also be okay. testing uh, some tooling designs from uh, integrators as well, uh, the different suppliers that Rivian has. Designing, building up fixtures, testing them, um, seeing what gives us a uh, solid product. I love it. This is... To me, it sounds like an accelerated kind of career path, but it also sounds like you're following what interests you, right? Do you feel like your interests are guiding you down a career path then? Absolutely. Um, the big thing for me is that I'm, you know, able to branch out. At Purdue, it's a lot, it's going to be a lot more metal cutting on machining uh, style of things going around there. But here it's a lot more process development, design of different components for the manufacturing lines and you know, proofing out things. And it's just, I get to learn so much about the different concepts of manufacturing. Yeah, man. I'm excited for you and your path. You're all lit up, first of all. You're super excited about this. I know when we first met and we were talking, you were just so lit up. That's why you're here today. But for me, it's like there's a lot of young people in the world and they're working jobs that they don't love. I'll, I'll put it that way. You know, they're doing things that they have to to pay the bills. Whereas you've took the opportunities to enter into a career path that's just like opening before you uh where you're giving back to like the world really like you're develop you're helping now develop processes is, that are going to make the electric vehicles more manufacturable so how does it feel to know you're contributing to the development of like vehicles and the manufacturability of vehicles what's that experience like for you it's really exciting you know it feels like i'm able to be part of something big and I get to grow my knowledge base with the help of my mentors. And uh, it just feels amazing to be doing, you know, what I love to do, which is this ma the manufacturing industry. Yeah. And you said a key point there. I don't want people to step over. You've also set yourself up with mentors in this space, but you're also mentoring people that are coming up. Now you're mentoring the leaders that are mentoring others, which is kind of a, a whole other level to it. I really love hearing how you're, finding ways to get back. And when you're talking about like just your enjoyment of the fact that you feel like you're getting that sense of contribution out of your career path. Cause I mean, how many young people do you know? I, I'm sure you've got friends that aren't in manufacturing, like, and they've got, you know, jobs that are paying the bills and you get to get this big sense of like contribution. <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely amazing. You know, like it's, you know, I really want to, as you know, many people have in inspired me to do what I love and uh, just follow my passion, follow my heart. I really want to inspire uh, the younger generation as well. One example being my younger brother, who I actually okay. took to IMTS. It's just an amazing experience, you know. Yeah. So younger brother, how, how much younger is he? He's 12. Um, so he's about, oh, wow. he's about nine years younger. Yeah. So what did he think about IMTS? I mean, here's a 12-year-old at IMTS. This year was my first year at IMTS. I wish I would have went at 12. What was his experience like? He absolutely loved it. Him and my mom just 
were <laughs> they couldn't stop like stop stopping at each booth. They were taking so many pictures yeah. that, you know, my mom even was like every single call during uh, the time she was in Chicago. It was only talk about IMTS. And my brother, he really made me f- feel proud. Yeah. After the show, he comes up to me and he tells me, hey, can you, you know, once we get together again, once you're done with your internship, I want to learn manufacturing. Um, and he told me, like, you already have two years of experience. You know, if I start now, by the time I'm your age, I'll have 10 years of experience. Plus, he was just asking so many questions that I didn't even think about um, to each oh, wow. uh, supplier at uh, the show. So overall, the the entirety of it was just really heartwarming for me. Oh, man, I love that you got that experience. Not only are you mentoring other students, but now your own little brother, which I've got three younger brothers. So you're like, are you the eldest in the family? Yes, Uh, it's just me and my uh, younger brother. So to give back to your own family as well, right? So you know, you can set your brother up with a path that he's going to love, that he's going to be excited about. Um, that he's already thinking about like, okay, if I get into it now, the tool realm's already two years in, but I can be ahead of like where he is. Oh, it's so cool, man. You've inspired your brother. Your mother was all lit up. I'm sure she loved seeing both of her boys just like geeking out on all this technology and talking about it. Uh, has there been any friends that you've shared with where they've been inspired by what you get up to or hearing about, you know, your contribution? I think so. I feel like a lot of my friends understand uh, my love for manufacturing. And even at the center, I've made so many friends uh, with uh, the people I work with. When someone asks them uh, my name, they know me as like, uh, you know, either like the guy who knows like all the Kenna Metal catalog or I'm just always lit up, you know, so they, they really know me for that. And I also even got the chance to one time present for uh, my brother's class. And, you know, I taught him about the manufacturing realm and just taking the steps to kind of uh, tell people my passion, you know. You just keep finding new ways to give back to the world, dude. You, That's you go in absolutely. front of your, like, because they're what, grade six, grade seven, something like that yep. when they're 12? Grade, yeah. Grade six. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the big my, thing yeah. is, biggest person who's inspired me you know, to obviously tighten. And yeah. he's inspired so many across the world. And one day, oh, yeah. that's just my goal as well, to give back uh, and follow in his footsteps and inspire people just the same way he did to me. I was actually, I think you already answered it. But in case there's more, I will ask it. I was going to ask what inspires you? I mean, to go into your brother's class, to go in and support all of these students as they're coming in, and then you're mentoring the mentors. And all of that, like, is there anything else that drives you to do that? I think the biggest thing um, is like, the reason I love manufacturing so much is, yeah. you know, the adrenaline rush of, you know, like roughing out a part super fast and then <laughs> seeing it go from like a graphical representation on my computer to a physical metal part, um, just different things like that. And then sharing yeah. sharing that to people and then them understanding what I'm talking about and them getting excited about it. It's like, I just, I can just make so many friends and, you know, different things like that. Uh, and that's the biggest thing for me. I love that you just talked about the the connection between like designing out on computer, because there's a whole world of like uh, video game designers. Uh, I've met a few actually, they started in video game design and then they ended up running machine shops because they're like, I'd rather make stuff in the real world, like design it on the computer. Do you share any of that? I know you share it with your friends and your brother and with the people you work with. Uh, do you have anywhere online where people are listening? Like, man, I want to see what this guy's making. Do you share anything like that on there? Uh, like on I Instagram need- or anything like that? I need to work on that a little bit more. Uh, I haven't been the best okay. with that, but I'm slowly trying to get back in the workspace of, you know, metal cutting and share my projects. Obviously, a CNC expert and LinkedIn um, are great places. So I will soon yeah. be uh, starting my portfolio and making it better. Nice. Yeah, I haven't. I've seen like portfolios on CNC expert. I haven't done it myself. That's that's such a cool platform too, man, to be able to build your portfolio like that in a secure environment. Mm -hmm. Um, That's the kind of stuff I wish was around, you know, 20 odd years ago when I got into machining, because it would have been so cool to document my journey through manufacturing a little more graphically. I mean, smartphones weren't even really a thing with cameras when I started in machining. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) 
it's incredible yeah. how much the metal cutting realm has kind of uh, or you know developed di modern yeah. tool pads, different machines, different tooling as well. You know, just better tooling overall, and it's just getting better by the day. It's getting better. I mean, we were both at IMTS. I mean, the advancements. You talk to some of the booths, you're like, okay, well, what's different from two years ago? And some of them have like a thousand line items of things that company's done in the last two years. The Autodesk Fusion um, setup, did you get over to the software hall? Like their list of improvements in two years was absolutely crazy. I mean, I already see it, you know, I'm doing a little bit of cam because I, I don't want to get away from the metal cutting side while I'm here. Yeah. Um, and I don't really have access to a CNC, but, you know, just getting on Fusion and camming away is kind of helping me out. And I've seen so many improvements already, uh, especially with their five axis side and, you know, just different mm -hmm. components to their software that's making it a much better experience. I know out in the world at least for my generation, perhaps it's shifting for your generation. Manufacturing has like that dark and gloomy. I don't mean this when I say it, but the image of it is like, oh, it's the, it's the dumb guys. It's the not smart people that are in manufacturing. That's the kind of image that exists out in the world, like in movies and pop culture and stuff. But what would you say is your actual impression with, of the people you're working in and the conditions, like the environments that you're working in? I wouldn't say like any industry is dumb. Uh, you know, you got to be smart and talented to work in any industry. And it's really getting into the depths of it and learning, um, you know, for spe like uh, specifically for like manu uh, metal cutting. It's, you know, just the things like learning about what different flute counts do, what different feeds and speeds do. I think that's been my experience where, you know, again, for any industry, you got to know um, the specifics to grow to the different uh find the different achievements in that industry yeah and when it comes to the environment what's your experience have been so far with with machine shops would you agree that they're dark gloomy kind of places no i mean it might just be that i'm from more of a student oriented shop but okay. we have fun in what we do it's not dark and gloomy you know everyone's pumped everyone's pushing each other to uh become better in uh in the industry and Overall, the environment is just a nice place. Um, and again, it might be different in other places, um, but I haven't found myself in a place like that. I am so grateful that you came in, Atul Ram, to, to share your journey, right? I love getting the perspective of younger people in the trades. Uh, some of us that have been in the trades longer, we have a different point of view sometimes. Um, I have definitely worked in dirty shops. I would say that they still exist out there. They're not the common anymore. Um, way more shops are clean, even outside of the student, like the, the learning environment that you've been in or Rivian, which is brand new technology, brand new facilities. Um, I would say it's changing. And I love that that's what you're getting out of it. And when you're talking about the fun, man, how many people want to go to work and just enjoy the time that they're there and pursue the things they're passionate about instead of, I mean, what's the alternative for a young person entering? You've got what? You've got desk work where you're just sitting there doing like paperwork at like a legal firm or something. You've got, I mean, fast food, obviously, that's a huge industry that sucks up a lot of young people. Um, would you rather be in another industry right now? Absolutely not. This is the industry <laughs> for me. And I know that this is the only industry I will be in. Thank you. Is there anything else you would say? Like, let's say, because I mean, it's going out into the Internet, right? You might be speaking to kids that are your brother's age. You might be speaking to people that are in high school. Maybe they don't have a career path picked out yet. Maybe they're considering manufacturing. Maybe they don't even know manufacturing exists as an option. Is there anything you would say to those people? I think uh, adding on to uh, the point of the dark, gloomy machine shops from earlier, any industry, not just manufacturing, you got to keep an open mindset. That is what will allow us to kind of adapt to the different and new uh, kind of accustoms to that specific industry. And that's what will allow us to grow to different height, like new heights. Right. So I think that's the biggest thing is keeping that open mindset. And I know a lot of people have said that uh, to me um, and I've seen it so many times on Titans where they say that as well. And that's kind of my driving factor is keeping that open mindset. Don't give up. Try different things. Try new things. Um, see what works and uh, go on from there. That, I think that's a beautiful point to end on, Atul Ram. Keep an open mind. 
I know it served me well. It's clearly serving you well with all your progression over the last couple of years and to anyone else watching out there. I mean, I wish you would come into manufacturing, but whatever career you're in, keep your mind open, look for the possibilities in what you're doing, pursue your passions. And if you know any young people that are under 25 that are in the trades that would love to come on and share about their experience, like a tool Ram has today, connect them with me. Um, a tool Ram, really quick. Uh, so the best place to find you right now would be LinkedIn for the bulk majority of people. Absolutely. Okay. So I'll throw the link to get connected with him. If you're like, man, this young person, I want to get connected to this guy. I will put a link to his profile down below so you can reach out to him. Maybe hear a little bit more of his story. This is obviously a condensed version. Thanks so much, Arthur. It means a lot to, uh, for you to have me on here. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And to all the machinists out there, keep your spindles turning and earning.